Shalom. Today we are continuing the series in understanding Hebrew verb structure. In this series we are covering the different tenses, the different persons, and the different binyanim. If you're not familiar with these terms, you need to go back and look at the very earliest videos. We're still working in the perfect or the past tense. Today we're going to cover the hefil binyam. Remember that every past tense verb is conjugated for these ten different forms, but in every binyan, the endings for the past tense are always the same, and I hope by now that you have memorized these endings. The first verb that we're going to look at is this root, badal. In the he feel, it means to separate. In the participle presentation of this verb in the he feel, we see that God separated the day from the night in Genesis. So the full conjugation looks like this. In the present tense, we see that yud infix in every form. Mavdil, mavdila, mavdilim, mavdilot. But in the past tense, in the perfect tense, we only see that yud infix in the third person. Otherwise, it disappears. However, the he feel perfect form will always start with a hey and will always have these same endings. So we'll look at some examples from scripture. In Leviticus 20, 24, God is talking to the people. He tells them they're going to inherit this land flowing with milk and honey. And he says, Ani Yehovah Elohechem. I am Yehovah, Jehovah, your God, Asher Hivdalti Etchem. Min Ha'amin, who separated you from the nations. This is the first person singular. God is saying, I separated you. In the third person, again, we see here is the Yud infix. The form is Hivdil. Moses is talking to the uh, rebelling Korah people. And the Korah people, they were already Levites, but they were jealous of Moses and Aaron's position. And Moses says, Hama'at, is it a small thing to you, ki hivdil Elohe Yisrael etchem, that the God of Israel has separated you, you already separated out because you are Levites. In Exodus 26.33, we see a female form, hivdila is the verb, the subject is the parochet, which is the curtain which hangs between the holy place and the most holy place. Parochet is feminine, and so it is dividing, as it says, ben hakodesh uven kodesh hakodeshim, between the holy and between the most holy, the holy of holies. In the second person, plural, again, we don't see the yud. In Leviticus 20, 25, it's talking about separating out the animals which are clean and the animals which are unclean. God commands us to make a separation. The heave dal tem. It's conjugated in the perfect. It's read in the imperfect in the future tense because of the vav conversive. Ben ha behema ha tehora le temea. Between the animals which are clean and unclean. Again, talking about clean and unclean in Ezekiel 22. He's talking about the priests, kohaneha, for priests. Lo hivdilu, they didn't separate. The priesthood is corrupt. Lo hivdilu, so this is a third person plural. Again, we do see the yud infix coming back in. This is the root yatsa. In the pa'al, remember, it means to go out. In the he feel, it means to bring out. Remember the blessing, ha motzi lechem, the one who brings out the bread from the earth. So one of the things that happens because of the beginning yud, that yud in these different forms changes to a vav, to a cholem vav, and we'll see it. In the first person in Exodus 6.6, 6, God is saying, I am Yehovah, I will take you out from under the burdens of Egypt. So we see the yud is gone, there's a cholem vav, it starts with hey because it's he feel, it's the first person, there's no yud infix, hotzeti, 
conjugated in the perfect, but read in the future. For the second person, masculine singular, in Exodus 32.11, Moses is talking to God. He's talking about the people. He says, Asher hotzeta me'eretz Mitzrayim, which you took out from, which you brought out from the land of Egypt. Here we have the third person, masculine singular. Here is the yud infix, hotzi. In Genesis 14, 18, talking about Melchizedek, Melech Shalem, Hotzi Lechem Beyayin, he brought out bread and wine. The second person, plural masculine, in Exodus 16, 3, the people are complaining to Aaron and Moses. They're saying, You brought us out to this wilderness. Ki Hotzetem, Otanu El Hamidbar. In Exodus 12, 39, here is the third person plural. Again, the yud is back, hotziyu, talking about the dough which the Israelites brought out from Egypt, from which they made their matzah. We'll look at one more root. This is a hollow root, bo. Remember, in the pa'al, it means to come. In the Hephiel, it means to bring. In Genesis 27, 12, we see the first person. There's no yud in here. It's the first person, heveti. Jacob is talking about going into a uh, fool, his father, to get the blessing. And he says, um, you know, if, if he touches me, then heveti alai klala. I will bring a curse on myself instead of a blessing. In Genesis 27.10, just a few verses before that, this is where his mother is suggesting that he bring. And so uh, she says to him, You bring to your father. You will bring to your father. In Genesis 4.4, 4, we have the third person, singular masculine, he brought. And we see it's talking about hevel, hevi, Gam hu mi bechorot sono, and Hevel brought from the firstborn of his flocks. Here is the yud. In Leviticus fifteen twenty nine, it's talking about the woman who has given birth, and uh, what her offering is to be. She is to bring two doves, or turtle doves, or pigeons, something of that sort. So we see the form hevia otam. She will bring them. It's a third person. We see the yud. In the second person plural, again, complaining. Miriam has just died. There's no water. And the people complain again to Moses and Aaron in the plural. Why did all y'all bring this congregation of, of Jehovah to the wilderness? Hevetem. In the third person plural, in Genesis 43, 2, talking about the brothers now have, uh, the family has eaten all the grain which they brought from Egypt, talking about that. Asher heviyu mi Mitzrayim, which they brought. It's the third person plural. We're going to see again the yud infix. I didn't find any verse for we brought, but if you listen carefully, probably you know this song. Shalom.